Cage Kumar here, crushbackpain.com. Today we're going to talk about how herniated discs heal. In a previous video, we discussed the fact that herniated discs do heal. Today we're going to delve deeper into the mechanism by which herniated discs heal. Before we get to the actual theories on why the discs heal and how they heal, we first need to talk about the disc itself so you have a better understanding of the, the makeup of the disc and the anatomy of the disc. So I have a little model right here. This is just a lumbar segment model. So you've got your vertebrae and then you've got your disc and this is the front here, this is the back. This yellow part you see here is the spinal cord and these little, these little pieces here are the nerve roots. So if you were looking at me from the side and you could see my lumbar spine, this is what it would look like. And this little model has a disc in red and this part in the, in the middle that kind of moves when I push the vertebrae together and pull them apart. On a real lumbar disc, that inside part would be the nucleus pulposus. And then this outside part here, these little strings that you can see that hold that, that kind of gel part in, that would be called the annulus fibrosus. So in a live lumbar disc, the inside of the disc, it actually moves around and it's kind of like a gel-like substance. That's the nucleus pulposus. And then the outside of the disc that holds that substance in is called the annulus fibrosus. And then as we move around, that inside part of the disc moves around and dissipates load. So that's how the disc works. And you need to know that to understand how it heals. With, with disc healing, a lot of times it's referred to as spontaneous regression. Because when people have a herniated disc, a lot of times it'll just heal. It'll go away. And when you look at an MRI a year or so after somebody has a disc herniation, it's either smaller or it's gone completely. So they refer to it in the medical literature as spontaneous regression. There's three main theories to explain how that process takes place. The first theory states that when a disc herniates and part of that inside gel-like substance pushes out through the outer layer that holds everything in, pushes out through the annulus fibrosus, the first theory states that that chunk of the inside of the disc that comes out basically just kind of dehydrates and shrinks. So that's one theory. Now the second theory states that the posterior longitudinal ligament, which this model doesn't have, but you can see right back here in this space, on a, on a real live person, there'd be a ligament right here where my finger is. The second theory states that that ligament, when tension is put on that ligament, it actually pushes that disc bulge back in. So it's more of a, a, a mechanical theory. And then the third theory of how lumbar discs heal or spontaneously regress involves a inflammatory response and an autoimmune response. And that theory states that when part of that inside disc comes out, the nucleus pulposus, and it comes out in here into this epidural space, that's the space around the spinal cord, when that nucleus pulposus comes out into that epidural space, the body recognizes that as a foreign substance and it actually attacks it. It attacks it with macrophages and some other cells and those cells actually eat up the nucleus pulposus and get rid of it. And so there's a, an inflammatory response and an autoimmune response. And this has been studied extensively in, in human intervertebral discs and also animal models and there is very good evidence to back this theory up. Now, the autoimmune response would not occur unless a disc was sequestered or extruded completely, and that means the nucleus pulposus comes completely out of the annulus fibrosus into the epidural space. So that theory doesn't really happen, or that doesn't happen unless the disc is herniated to that degree. And the medical literature shows us that when 
discs are extruded, there's a greater likelihood of spontaneous regression and, and healing. So, and we've talked about this in previous videos, the more severe the herniation, extrusion, protrusion, the more severe that disc herniation is, the greater likelihood your body's going to clean it up. When you just have a bulge and the outside of the disc, the annulus fibrosis, is still intact, you're not going to get an autoimmune or inflammatory response in the epidural space because that inside of the disc tissue hasn't actually extruded and pushed out. So when you do have spontaneous regression or, or a healing of the disc or a decreased bulge on MRI and it wasn't extruded, it's more likely the second theory where the tension through the posterior longitudinal ligament actually pushes the bulge back in, it's more likely that occurs. It's most, it's most likely that different, different methods of healing take place with different types of disc herniations. So if you have a disc extrusion where the nucleus pulposus comes all the way out into the epidural space, obviously that inflammatory response, autoimmune response is most likely why that is cleaned up and that heals. If you just have a, a small disc bulge small herniation, then it's likely that the, the regression of the bulge is more mechanical in nature and that posterior longitudinal ligament tension through that ligament pushes the disc bulge back in. And then it's also likely that there is some degree of dehydration and shrinkage of that nucleus pulposus when it comes out and it's no longer connected to the inside of the disc. So. There's probably all three of those things going on to a certain degree with different types of disc bulges. It's just really important, or different types of disc herniations, it's just really important that you understand discs do heal. I can't tell you how many people I see that have a disc herniation on an MRI and they, they conceptualize it as a disease that can't be cured and they just think they're gonna have this issue for the rest of their lives. Now. It is less likely for spontaneous regression to occur when you have a smaller disc bulge. So there's a really good chance you can have a disc bulge that hasn't extruded and it's gonna stay there. It's gonna stay the same. It doesn't get smaller, it doesn't get bigger, it just stays, but you don't have pain. So when that first happens, you can be symptomatic for a while because the disc is like any other tissue and there are nerve endings, especially in that back part of the disc. So it's gonna be painful, but the disc will heal and it's healed even though it still shows up as a bulge on an MRI. When you're really going to see big changes in disc herniations is when they're larger herniations and they do extrude through the annulus fibrosis like we've discussed. So again, to recap, three primary theories of how spontaneous regression, which is healing of the disc, actually occurs. The first one is that the part of the disc that herniates dehydrates and shrinks. The second one is that the disc bulges out and that posterior longitudinal ligament tension through that ligament pushes the bulge back in. And then the third way is through an autoimmune and inflammatory response that actually eats up the extruded nucleus pulposus and gets rid of it. So as we discussed, those three things probably all happen to some degree depending on the severity of the disc bulge and depending on what's going on with it. The take home point is discs do heal. It's well documented in the medical literature and there's three primary theories by which that happens. So if you understand that that happens, then that can help you decide what's the best course of action with my herniated disc. It's really, really interesting. The medical literature shows that even with extruded nucleus pulposus, if you have surgery compared to not having surgery, the outcome is the same. Now, and we're talking pain and function, that's how the outcome is measured. It is also shown that if you have extruded nucleus pulposus and you have surgery, basically a microdisectomy to take that little, that little piece out, you do have a decrease in symptoms sooner. So, this is all really good information that you need to be aware of. If you have irretractable pain, if you have bowel or bladder incontinence, if you have foot drop, 
any weakening of the lower extremity muscles because of herniated nucleus pulposus, then it's a good idea to consider surgery. If you don't have any of those things, you're going to have just as good of an outcome if you have surgery compared to if you don't have surgery with a herniated disc. So all of this information is just to help you make informed decisions about your medical care. And so you realize having a herniated disc on an MRI is not, is not a, a sentence to always have lower back pain for the rest of your life. The tissues heal, the discs heal, and you can actually help them heal, and you can make the discs heal stronger and faster if, if you know how to load them, and you know how to move, and you know how to exercise. If this video helped you, leave me a thumbs up below. Subscribe to the Crush Back Pain YouTube channel. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions. And check back weekly for more ways to beat back pain permanently.